Hello, everybody, and welcome back to episode two of the Wes Miller Show, presented by the UNCG Alumni Association. I'm Luke Martin, alongside the coach, Wes Miller. And, Coach, great to be back with you here this week. And uh, before we talk about the basketball games over the weekend, the Spartan Showcase, uh, how'd you enjoy the holiday, Thanksgiving holiday? I know you had the team over for a great team dinner and also was busy last week doing some community service work as well. Yeah, it was a good holiday for us. I got a chance to practice a little bit last week, Monday through Thursday. Uh, four days in a row of practice. Coaches always love that type of thing, and uh, and then it was great. We, you know, we had all the all the guys over to the house. The, my wife did some cooking. Uh, Coach Manuel's wife Rhonda did some cooking, and we got to give them a special shout out, Ashley and Rhonda, for the work they did. I think it was good to have the whole team over. It was really good to eat some good food, and and then we did a nice thing on Wednesday. Went over to the homeless shelter around the corner and uh, delivered some turkeys. Uh, you know, to, to families that are that, that have those kind of needs. Uh, we also helped kind of organize their food pantry and do some some volunteer work there, and and that's what it's all about. You know, I, I think there's so many people out there that that are less fortunate than us, and and having the chance to give back a little bit, we need to do more of that. Uh, and it was good that we got the opportunity to do it last Wednesday. I know you talked about all the great food that was fi- fixed for you guys last Thursday. I'm sure everybody's wondering how many plates did uh, Coach Miller have at the Thanksgiving dinner. Well, it's not just the amount of plates I had on <laughs> Thursday; it's all the leftovers I've had since. <laughs> I probably gained about five pounds, so I got to get back on the the workout train this week but but no it was great and I mean our, our wives are amazing uh they sacrifice so much uh to let us do what we do because we're never around and and then on the, on the holidays instead of spending time with them we make them cook and slave away in the kitchen <laughs> uh and then, then we, we come eat and then we, we don't see them anymore so uh you know special thanks to get Ashley and Rhonda uh, they really did a fantastic job for us well you know a week ago at this time coach we were previewing the Spartan Showcase and knew that it was going to be a very tough tournament uh with very good competitive teams and that's what you got three really competitive games before we go through the games here each individually overall what were kind of your thoughts now at the tournament's over with and knowing that you had three competitive of games and we're able to get the last one against Jacksonville. Yeah, well, I'm, I mean, I think we got better. Uh, I think it was a good experience in that sense. Um, I think we, we were able to address some things. Some things were highlighted that, that needed to be highlighted in game settings, uh, late game situations. So I think we got better throughout the weekend, Luke. Wasn't a perfect weekend, but it was a good weekend for us early in the season to address some things and improve. Well, you mentioned that game against Navy, and let's go ahead and roll the highlights. And we start with Friday against the midshipmen at the Chalice's crew. You mentioned coming in red hot. And we start really from the beginning of the game, Coach. Your guys got off to the early lead here. Marvin Smith knocking down a three-pointer, then Asad Lamont with his defense leading the two points. What did you like about the opening sequence to this game from your squad? Well, I thought we came out aggressive. I thought we really played confident on offense. They have a matchup zone they play that's given a lot of people trouble this year. And it's anchored by the big fellow they have in the middle. Uh, but but we did a nice job attacking it early, stepping up and knocking shots down. We made 14 threes against Navy. I mean, we shot the heck out of the basketball. Uh, if we did some other things better, it might have been a route. <laughs> you mentioned Will Kelly. He just slammed it home there to give Navy their, the lead by one point. They led by one at the half. But here's a sight for sore eyes coach getting Demetrius Troy back. And he made his presence felt here with this three-pointer. What's it mean to get him back and finally in the lineup? It's not just back, Luke. I mean, it's it's to get him here for the first time in a UNCG uniform. He's been able to practice with with us, and so we know how good he is and, and how good he's going to be. But to get him in a uniform in a game, that's a big boost for our team. He just was cleared two days before our first this game this weekend, two days before this Navy game. So it's going to take some time to get him in, in the fold and to get him assimilated. But, man, the more he does that, the better our team's going to be. And you see Francis Alonzo put you guys ahead here with this three-pointer. Did you like what you see from Francis in this game and also the tournament? He had a pretty good tournament. Yeah, he's having he's having a really good start to his freshman year. Uh, Francis is going to be a terrific player here. He can play multiple positions in the backcourt. He really shoots the basketball, but he's a full he's a he's a all around good basketball player. He handles it. He makes good decisions in ball screens and in the open floor. We're really excited about Francis. He just has to keep getting better as the year goes on. And we're seeing the end of the game situation here, where Navy got the and one and was able to convert. And Clay Bird, his three goes long here to try to take the lead with about 40 seconds left. What did you feel was the difference down the stretch? Well, we were up, uh, we didn't have the clip on there, but we're up one with a minute and 11 seconds and we turn it over. Uh, and then not only do we turn it over, we go down and give up a, an and one on the other end. So we go from up one to, to down two in, in about a five second segment. And then we obviously come down and don't convert on the next possession. That was the difference. We got to get a little better taking care of the basketball. I thought we turned it over a little too much this weekend. Uh, the aggressive kind, Luke, you can live with. You can live with the turnovers where guys are trying to make an aggressive play that's within their game. 
uh, the, the, ca- the casual kind, the careless kind, and the ones that frustrate us. We had way too many of those this weekend. On to the Saturday night matchup with the IPFW Mastodons, one of the top-tier teams in the Summit League. And early on, Coach, they were able to flex their muscles and show why they are one of the best teams in the Summit League. No matter what you guys did, it seemed IPFW had a response. What was key to IPFW's early success in this game? Well, they really execute. I mean, they really execute the things they do. It's a typical Midwest basketball team with a bunch of Midwest kids. Uh, they're fundamentally sound. They run their stuff. They shoot the ball well. Uh, and, and they did. They, they executed early on the offensive end. They really packed it in defensively uh, and, and really made us take shots that we didn't necessarily want to take. It turned into some really quick shots early, uh, and then they made us guard for another 20, 25 seconds on the other end of the floor. It was an ugly game, but I think that's the way they wanted to play, and, and it affected us. Moving to the second half, it seemed more of the same. IPFW continued to stretch that lead into double digits. What did you feel continue from after you talked to the guys at halftime into the second half? What did you feel was still the common thread that IPFW was able to still maintain that lead? Well, I, I think we were frustrated. I mean, I think it comes down to that. And, uh, and not to take any credit away from IPFW because they played a good game, but we were frustrated. We were frustrated with everything that wasn't going our way. We were frustrated that we were in position to win a game the night before and didn't come out with the win. And you can't approach it like that in college basketball. you got to go on to the next play. you got to go on to the next game. It's a long season. And uh, we let the frustration affect us. What I did like, though, we made a run here at the end of the game to get back in it. In the last three minutes, we decided to start playing. We made a run hit a big three, Deontay comes up with the steal, and then we got to understand time and score, uh, make it a one-possession game. We don't want to call the press off in this situation because we got them on the ropes a little bit, but you certainly don't want to foul in a one-possession game. Okay, so you want to be able to extend that pressure, uh, you know, keep them kind of riled up a little bit on offense but not foul, and, and that was a foul, and that's something we can learn from. Did you feel that that was kind of one of the main things you took away from this game was just foul situation, knowing the game situation, or what were some of the other thoughts as we look at the final stats here from the IPFW game? Well, this was more about our mentality. That's what we kept talking about throughout the game and after the game was being able to play the next play, not letting things that you can't control frustrate you, not letting mistakes frustrate you. And then again, I think throughout the weekend, Luke, we talked a lot about game management. Uh, situations. That's something we've done in practice, but not as much as I would have liked at this point. So we got to continue to work at it through the preseason and or through the early season and then into our practices as well. K.L. Locke led the way with 13 points and eight rebounds. Speaking of K.L. Locke leading the charge, we will revisit that in this game, the Sunday finale of the Spartan Showcase against another determined team in the Jacksonville Dolphins. We begin with just over seven minutes into the game with your troops trailing by six, Coach, but not for long. Francis Alonzo drills his eighth three-pointer of the weekend, but in the following possessions, it was the defensive tenacity of your team as it shows on these two plays. Clay Bird diving, laying out on the floor, which ultimately leads to a Lamont three, but then it was Deontay Baldwin running the length of the floor, cutting and surfing his way through the Dolphin defense for two points. What clicked defensively here? I'll tell you what, Clay Bird diving on the floor, there, that's what it's got to be about. we we got to be a team that gets loose balls, that out-hustles people, uh, that gets 50-50 balls, big-time rebounds. we we got to do the little things. And, and that play, uh, that got me as excited as any play I saw the whole night. You know, he, he dove through two people to go get a basketball. I haven't seen anybody do that in this program since Corey Van Dusen on a consistent basis. And it's good to see Clay starting to take that type of a role defensively. Want to talk about hot shooting? Look no further than Jacksonville. 6 of 12 behind the arc. Darius Dawkins, coach, was 13 of 18 in the previous two games in the tournament. How crushing were these three-pointers, coach, in trying to close the gap against Jacksonville? They got some guys that are really, really impressive three-point shooters. And, and sometimes we didn't close out correctly. I mean, we had a couple short closeouts to guys that are shooters, and we knew better on the scouting report. But a lot of them were good closeouts over our hands, and they just knocked them down. Uh, I'll tell you what, they're, they're going to beat some people with the way they shoot the basketball. What I was really proud of is that we didn't let a couple tough shots and, and us not figuring it out offensively early affect us from playing the next play. We just kept playing. We kept plugging away, and that's the kind of mentality we didn't have against IPFW, and that really helped us here against Jacksonville. This man, the former walk-on, may have only had six points, but the timing of them, perfect. Lamont with back-to-back -back critical threes to inject some positive momentum for the team coach. How big were these two three-pointers for Assad? Yeah, you know, Assad was big for us. Clay was big for us. 
Uh, but a lot of guys were big. I thought the ball moved better on offense. You know, I think RJ really got it moving a couple times going inside out. The ball was moving. We're finding the open guy. And then guys are knocking down some shots, and that's the way it's supposed to be. We also did a nice job late in the second half of getting to the offensive glass. It was something we struggled with all weekend. We finally got some second-chance points because we took better shots and got to the offensive board. I tease this heading into the highlight package, Coach. K.L. Locke did anything but tease down the stretch. Your team gave him the ball, and he delivered. What did you like about KL, but also the team's response in the closing moments of this game? Well, you said it, we executed a little better. We got the ball we wanted it. We got into KL's sweet spot, and he was able to convert some baskets. Thought that was big for us. But Deontay Ball was terrific for us, too. I mean, you see him there missing the free throw. He made three of them before that. Uh, but he was absolutely terrific for us. In the, in the first half, Babino for them had 17 points. You see Corey Babino, 17 points. That was all in the first half. Deontay Baldwin took the challenge in the second half. He didn't score a basket in the second half. He was terrific for us all weekend, competing, leading us. Uh, you know, I, I think that the little guy, he just competes as good as any guy I've ever had, as any player I've ever had. He works as hard as any player I've ever had. And he's got to continue to be that guy for us this weekend. He's got to kind of be our heart and soul out there on both ends of the floor. And uh, we don't talk about him enough, but, man, we value the things he did. I thought him shutting down Babino in the second half was as big a key to the game as anything that happened. And, Coach, you know, obviously you mentioned it, you know, heading into the highlight package. It wasn't a perfect weekend, and, you know, nobody on your team uh, or coaching staff or players would say it's a perfect weekend by any stretch of the imagination. But knowing how the first two games went and then seeing your team put in a very similar situation late in the game, a tie game, having a chance to take the lead and learning how to win, and they finally do. They finally able to capture that win late in the game. Could have ended probably any better knowing that your team, again, was put into a similar situation and this time found a way to win the ball game? No, I mean, that's the way it ended. I mean, you know, like as we talked about it in the beginning of the show, I mean, uh, I thought we improved this weekend. You know, we improved with our mentality. Our execution improved. We got better. That, that's what it's about here early in the preseason and non-conference is getting better every single day. Um, and, and so, no, I, I like the way it ended. I sure would have liked to come out here 3-0 and like Navy did. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's about learning and improving, and I thought we were able to achieve that this weekend. Well, we've reached our first break in the show, but when we come back, we'll have our player interview here on the Wes Miller Show, so don't go away. Hi, I'm Barbara Corcoran. To sell your home on time for the most money, you need a sharp agent with a marketing strategy that creates the most demand. Bottom line, you need a partner willing to put their own money on the line for you. In Greensboro and Winston-Salem, it would be Jason Bramblett. He attracts hundreds of buyers and creates so much demand that Jason can guarantee if your home doesn't sell at a price and deadline you agree to, he will buy it. Partner with the agent I trust. Go online or call and get your home sold. And welcome back to the West Miller Show, presented by the UNCG Alumni Association. But coaches stepped away. It's now the Assad Lamont <laughs> Show, which I'm sure viewership is just skyrocketing right now with Assad <laughs> joining the show. And Assad, it's great to have you, my friend. Great to have you with us. And uh, more you. importantly, are you surviving this time period right now? I know you got a lot of basketball games to get through, yeah. but also it's finals week for yeah, you. So that's a definitely a struggle. So <laughs> definitely got to do a lot of time managing. So luckily with today we got also. I try to put my head in the books extra hard today or something. Is it hard to believe for you, uh, even though you haven't been at UNCG all of your four years, but is it still one of those things when you walk around and you hear senior, Assad Lamont, it's hard to believe that yeah. this is your last year? Yeah, it's, it's definitely crazy because it flies by. So, like, when I look at the young guys, I'm like, man, you guys better grow up now because you're not going to be freshmen long. And before you know it, you know, it's over, like. You look at the guys like Deontay, it seems like they just were here yesterday. So it's kind of, it's really crazy. And like, I've been here three years and this feels like it's, was like one, like I, just one year, like this year and last year is like, and now it's over. So you definitely got to cherish it, cherish the moments. And I'm cherishing it right now. I know basketball has been a, obviously a huge part of your time here, but what have you enjoyed most about just being here at UNCG and being in Greensboro during your time here as a Spartan? Well, uh, basically Greensboro's already home for me, so it's like I'm at my home school, I'm in my hometown. Basically, I, I went to high school here, so it's like I'm familiar with it, and it's like I'm doing it for the city, not just myself and my school. So it's like I'm a I'm a home presence, and this is like, you know, basically my home. I feel like it's the second part of me, so it's pretty easy. 
I know when we were doing our 14 and 14 series on all of you guys, we chat about this earlier on, but uh, to reiterate it on the show, uh, former walk-on. Yeah. Uh, used to be a walk-on. That's why you came here to ultimately have that chance uh, mm -hmm. to be a scholarship guy. Now being a scholarship guy, uh, one, what does it mean? But two, to become a scholarship guy for Wes Miller, a guy who also was a walk-on and been very unfamiliar shoes like you are right now. Well, it's definitely a dream come true. I've always wanted to play at this level of D1, and when Wes gave me the opportunity to walk on, I, I really was, I jumped on it. Like, I didn't hesitate. I was like, all right, I'm going to UNCG, like, and I can fulfill my dream. If I have an opportunity to become a scholarship player, I'm going to work my butt off. If, if I had an opportunity, you know, I would be reluctant. If not, so be it. I'm going to still work, off, work my tail off, and luckily I was able to, and, uh, being West being a walk on himself, it kind of it makes you feel good that hit somebody's been in your same shoes and uh, he actually was able to reward me with a scholarship. So I'm I'm so thankful and grateful for him for you know seeing that in me and allowing me to get that scholarship. Let's turn now to the action on the floor. How big was the win against Jacksonville Sunday, and especially when you look at it from a big picture perspective, you guys as a team where you've been in every game mm -hmm. this year, even yeah. the games that didn't go your guys' way. You've had a chance late in those games to win each of those contests. But in saying that, to finally be in the same situation on yeah. Sunday against Jacksonville, well, this time seal the deal. How big was it knowing that that's something in the previous games where you weren't able to do so and you were finally put that to rest and finally close out a game that yeah. you guys had a lead? That was the center for us because uh, all the other games we'd been in it late and we'd either give up a lead or things that just didn't turn our way. And for us, to, we kept building on it, we kept working, and we finally you know, made that hump because we know we can win and we know we have what it takes. It was just you know, putting it all together, and we made it happen last night, and we're going to continue to make it happen. It's just that we had to, you know, take a couple bumps and bruises and get it right early so we can get it right further down on the road. Because we had, we've basically we had all three games that we lost one essentially at one point in time, and it's either, you know, some late game mistake that we've been making, and coaches have been preaching on like, you know, paying attention to the details, focusing, you know, making those little details, especially in crunch time, to, you know, make seal the win, and it feels great. Especially that's our first D1 win, so we're trying to you know build on that now. And we will see if the Spartans can get a win on Wednesday night against NCANT. The Aggies, another team here in Greensboro. Asad, I know I didn't quiz you this week on your teammates' tweets, <laughs> but I still hope you had fun coming yeah, on the show. Was, Thanks so was. much Thank for the you. time. Thank you. Once again, that was Asad Lamont. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, Coach Miller rejoins us as we preview the game with the Aggies on Wednesday night. Don't go away. Add big flavor to your next get-together with Subway Catering. Featuring good-to-go boxed meals with a side and freshly baked cookie, crowd-pleasing giant subs, and piled-high sandwich platters overflowing with flavorific choices. All made the way you say with everything you love, like jalapenos and chipotle southwest sauce. Subway Catering is simple and satisfying, a great value for any budget. Just call 877-360-CATER or visit Subway.com and let us take care of any occasion. Subway, cater fresh. Welcome back to the West Miller Show, presented by the UNCG Alumni Association. Coaches rejoined us here. And, uh, Coach, you know, this is a big time. Obviously, now after playing three games in three days, uh, you get to play two games in the course of the next eight days. Uh, but also the guys have some academic work to get well as done with finals coming up. So how big of a stretch is this? One, to get some rest, rest some guys up, uh, but also for your guys to get the classroom work done and kind of get that out of the back burner and focus on basketball here towards the end of the month of December. Well, they're student athletes first Luke we know that and, and this is a huge week for them uh, they have two days left of class and they're right into exams so we got it we actually gave them today off and I told them we gave them today off not because we didn't want to work with them if I had it my way we'd be watching about an hour of film and out there on the court for about an hour and a half working uh, but we gave them the day off so they get their academics in order we need them to really buckle down uh, to finish really strong academically and then you're right we get past this and we got a month where we can really focus on hoops and that's fun as a coach because they don't have class all day, and we can probably grab them twice a day if we want to. Now, we won't do that every day, but we will do it some type of thing. Um, so, no, it's, it's, it's a really good opportunity here over Christmas break after the exams get done to really focus in on basketball. And teams can really improve over Christmas break if they take the right approach. 
And now the lone game this week for you guys is against the Aggies, North Carolina A&T on Wednesday night. I know you're going to continue to do more prep on them as you continue throughout the week, but a little natural rival here as they're here in Greensboro. What about this game? And every game's important. You never want to say one game's more important than the other, but what kind of challenges do you think that the Aggies are going to present your club on Wednesday night? Well, you know, we talked about it uh, after we beat Jacksonville in the locker room on Sunday. You know, it's Thanksgiving break, and it's it's the holidays, so there's not a lot of people in the stands over the weekend at the tournament. Uh, certainly we knew that it would be that way going into it. It's going to be the exact opposite over across town at A&T on, on Wednesday night. It's going to be standing room only. It's going to be loud and crazy. I don't think we're going to have to get them excited. I think they're going to be excited just to be in that type of atmosphere. Um, they're all important, as you said, and you got to approach every game that way. It's always a little extra special when it's a rivalry game and it's, it's right in your backyard. So I think our guys will be excited for it. Uh, North Carolina a and will be excited. It'll be a good atmosphere in there. It should be a lot of fun Wednesday night, and we'll recap that game next week on the Wes Miller Show. Coach, got another show in the books. We uh, appreciate the time as always, and we'll chat next week. Two down, right? Two down, three <laughs> to go. Thanks, Luke. Two down. Thanks. That's Wes Miller. Be sure to watch the show next week. We appreciate everybody watching the show as always. For everybody in Spartan Athletics, for the Coach Wes Miller, I am Luke Martin saying so long. We'll talk to you next week. Mm-hmm.